yeah, I thought it was cool. It, it gave the track more character, and that track is the easiest one to pass on um, as far as any of the races to be raced at during the summer. Uh-huh. You can pass on that track almost anywhere. Like, it has so much opportunity for, like, good racing and yep. the dirt and everything. It's probably, I mean, Red Bud's the most special race for me because it is my, sure. like, I grew up racing there. But that is probably one of my favorite tracks. Yeah, Motocross the Nation is there next year. Going to be great going to be oh, great. I'm looking forward to it. And, and You'll see all the guys come out of the woodwork one race next year. I know, right? Yeah, go it's, this year. it's amazing. They just don't seem to be able to find the time to go to France or, or England. <laughs> I think, I think if, you, if you turn it down, you should ban them for however many years they turn it down. Yeah, like I, I mean, yeah, I mean. It's, I, not, it's not right. It's not right. I, I, I'm with you. Yeah, I like I, they want to be the heroes when it's on U.S. soil. and but yeah. But then – like Chase, you know how it is. Like the with this with the Deegan thing, Star is just gonna say, "Hey, we we want money to go," and then the Deegans go, "Well, it's not us, it's them." So everyone, like you'll never know. There is point, everyone's point. Thing. Yeah, I, you'll I, never I, really know. So I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty like uh, frustrated about the whole thing because it's just there's a lot of egos involved, and it's like yeah, it's not on anyone. It's just everyone's like, oh, this is what this is what we should do. This person saying this, this person. I'm like, dude, we're going to race for our country. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, there should like. be no other like that. The Olympics is the biggest sporting event that we uh, that like track runners, all those other sports have. Yeah. And then you can't even get guys to go race for our country. That you should, that should be an honor for you. Yeah, like, I mean, some of the guys last year that I heard said no. I'm just like, what? <laughs> like, yeah. like it's just like I can't. I mean. N- not you. You were in between sponsorships. No, I, mean, I get it. I was it. one of those last year, but it was, yeah. I had would have had a week on the bike. Like yeah, no, I, I and I, honestly, I, I was like, I was so close to going too. Like it was, it took a lot out of me. Like or it took a lot for me not to go. Yeah, your dad, um, your so. Kier was on board, but KTM really wasn't. Right? They were like, hey, we're we're not quite ready. Is that kind of how it was? Yeah, right? it was just like it does a lot riding on that because it's my first race in the bike. Like yeah. if it goes bad, yeah, it could be like it could start off the, like the relationship wrong but then super super cost ended up going bad so it didn't really matter what, but, I don't, um, what i don't get about the star thing is they've always been there for team usa yeah always they sent they went with troll train they went with jmart yeah. they, they always support that thing and then now the last two years apparently business they don't support is, it business is getting in the way yeah. of so of passion and, and cowie like, i mean cowie's never supported it yeah it's, or not never sorry never, not but. there's just a lot of there's a lot of egos involved and yes not like singling anybody out it's just like yeah. It's a lot of egos. Yeah. And it really <laughs> yeah. should just be like, okay, we need to do this for our country. Like, it's not. Right. It's letting the egos go and going for a good, not yeah. a good cause, but like trying to go win. Like, yeah. I don't like getting beat by France. Listen, I heard last year from people on the team that Brian was saying, we don't have a team that can win, so we don't want to go. I heard that from someone involved in Team USA. So if everyone wants to run around and deny it, that's fine, but this person would know. And that's what they told me Brian said. You know, yeah, and I, I mean, I, don't, I have no idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But th- he has to get a, if he had if he has to fix his wrist, like that's one thing. Yeah, but there's just a lot of stuff like being sad, and I'm like, dude, it's like, yeah. I'm not even saying just hate. I'm just saying, yeah, like, just, in general, like just, teams. Um, they're not, they're not. None of them are coming together and to make this thing work, which is frustrating. It's an odd shock too, with obviously Hayden and being the pro America. Yeah. you know, especially last yeah. year against Hunter and stuff. Yeah, and but it, it is odd. I mean, you can go back to Kawasaki. They didn't like some of KTM's tactics with Roger. Right. And so they just were like, we don't want to ride for Team USA with Roger. So that's an ego yeah. thing, what Chase was saying. That's an ego yeah. of a team yeah. Yeah. saying, we don't want to work with Roger. We don't care about America part of it. You know? Yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot of animosity yeah. between the teams. And like, it's not like hey, it's Hayden's fault. It's not like it's yeah. KTM. It's just like that none of them are coming together. And it's just, it's, yeah, it's annoying. Yeah, but, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. I, I don't quite get it either. Um, I don't begrudge anybody who turns it down. Like whatever, it's fine. Like I, I, yeah. I, I myself, but, but yeah, the the politics going on are an all time high behind the scenes the last five years that I've seen. Yeah, it's insane. You I know? mean, you look at the guy to the right of me; he's nine times for our team Canada. Yeah, and there's never a moment that you would say no. I know this year you did something very <laughs> cool for our country with the Dylan thing. We can yeah. get into that, but I mean, I, I I I never got to a position like that. But there's no way I would turn that down. Like you're, the whole country thing, like yeah. obviously for us in Canada. Watching, you know, whether it's World Juniors or the Olympics or hockey and all that stuff, like we we're so passionate about yeah. things like that. Yeah. Um, it's weird that it's kind of going away from well, the passion in our sport. It's it's a uh, with, with and st- you can tell on the phone. He he might have yeah. said, but he sound, Chase, you sound kind of pissed. Like it's pissed, right? 
Yeah, it, I'm. I'm not mad. I, I'm not. I'm annoyed. I yeah, think <laughs> the, the word. Like we should be sending our best team, best riders. Yeah. If that, like, even if I'm like, if I'm not in the, and I'm not saying we're not sending our best riders, but there's, well, if look, I'm not yeah. the best guy, like I don't want to go. Like, send somebody that's going to go win. Like that's like yeah. that's how I look at it. No, I mean, so, look, Hymas is going to end up going, and he's been riding great. But Hayden Deegan's faster. Yeah. yeah Hayden Deegan's faster than Chance Hymas. There's just no way around that. You <laughs> yeah. Know? Um, well, but, I just say you go off points. Like, I mean, yeah, yeah. Like I said, it's cool that Chance. Like, if he ends up going, that I mean he's willing to like drop everything and go. Yeah. It does add. I mean, it adds two weeks onto our season, and that's already long. Yep. Um. So I mean, I'm I'm stoked. Like, obviously, I love Aaron. And I'm glad he's going too. But so it's gonna be, it's gonna be fun. But um, yeah, it just it is a little frustrating. I didn't want to go on a rant, but I I, I got like a lot of news today. Oh, so okay. It's, kind of like, it's on like the, it's on my top of my list right, right. now. Race Fresh. Tech Rant, yeah, Chase Sexton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. um, no, it's not just yeah. adding to your like. It's not just adding to that that whole thing with SMX. That is a heavy race. Like there is yeah, an immense yeah. amount of pressure. Yeah. It's just like I don't know. I haven't done Anaheim one, but I'd be like, you're on that level of yeah. of you know uh, attention, pressure, and like you need to perform. Yeah. It's not just like yeah, it's yeah. it's a lot. Uh, you know what? Honestly, I I hope nothing but the best for AP because he went last year, kind of on short notice. wasn't exactly sure if he was yeah. yeah. going. Uh, he didn't have a great second moto. Uh, a- Red Bud didn't go well for AP when he was the champ. Like, I hope Aaron sees has good results in yeah. this thing. He will. Know? He's, he's gonna. On, yeah. He's on form right now too, and his yeah. starts are really good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, his starts are good. He's been riding like Iron Man. He was he was ripping because I. I felt like my pace was pretty pretty high, and he was he was right there. So um, I don't know. He's he's been riding good, and so is Chance. So um, yeah, we'll see. I'm going there to try and win my class. That's that's yeah, my yeah. that's my and, motivation. And like again, like I, I like the Cowie guys. I understand what they're saying, but they need if if the fans are pissed, then they should tell Cowie too. Like they haven't sent the guy. Eli was staying home all those years that he was 450 motocross champion. You know, yeah, for the most part. So yeah. like. Come on, guys, let's do it. But but then again, Ch- uh, Chase, my thing is, and I like David Luongo and the MXGP guys, but they're making so much money from this race, so much money. And, like, yeah. RJ Hamsar just told us a few months ago that he spent, I think he said 5K. I thought he said 10. Was he said 10? I thought he said 10. Maybe he said 10. Like, why should RJ Hampshire spend 10K out of his pocket to go represent USA? He shouldn't. Shouldn't spend a dime. Yeah. He's already spending the training and the and the time and everything else. But like to me, I think the MXGP should be like, hey, Team America sells tickets. Here you go. We'll help your cut. We'll help your travel. We'll help your whatever we got to do. You yeah. know. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, you ain't gonna. You're never probably gonna see that happen. No, no, no. <laughs> um, hey, speaking of annoyed though, speaking of ranting, <sighs> I didn't like the ghost ride. I don't want to. I don't like blowing up your bike. Don't like any of that. I didn't blow my bike up though. I the ghost ride is kind of like I did that 2020 Salt Lake. I did it when I won my first Supercross race, and that is like that's like a, a like a layup for for me. Like that that jump is like asking <laughs> like for a layup. It. I like that. Uh, like that, it's like that you're, it's asking for it. That picture is so. pretty the damn, yeah, damn the sick. Cool. Like that's going probably going to yeah, go up picture, in his house. I like the the picture is like Unreal. that will like be one of my. I mean, yeah. Hopefully the goal is to win more championships. So that yeah. picture is like the, will be special to me. The red bud time. water picture is great too. Oh yeah, on the cover. Mm-hmm. On the, the cover, that, actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that picture is actually super special because my the guy again Bob yeah. from Sunset Ridge. He told me he was going to oh. spray me if I won both uh-huh. motos. So I pulled. I saw him at the the, the like the where the old start was. I yeah. saw and he was kind of like far away, and there was photographers like in front of him. So I'm like, all right. I'm gonna have to like really make an effort to like go out of my way and try and get sprayed by him, and he was stoked. So yeah. it's and they put it on the cover, so that's that's even better. Well, okay, so then yeah, did, so I wasn't there. I was in the UK representing, uh, working for Team Canada here, uh, Chase. But did they blow the bike up or no? No, we they didn't, didn't blow, blow it up. We um, actually, well, like the the pits in Ironman are like that that um, that rock. Yeah. So I couldn't do a burnout on like the regular like without anything. So we put a piece. They drilled a piece of wood in the ground. I did a burnout on the stage actually, and like I was probably pretty close to going through the stage. I burnt like a hole in it, <laughs> and I got done. And they thought I fi- I started a fire underneath the stage because there was smoke everywhere. <laughs> oh, geez. and they're like freaking out. Like, hey, you got you got to stop. There's a fire. Like, I'm like I. 
I mean, I don't know how that's going to happen, but yeah, they thought it was a fire, but it ended up not being one. Right, right. And so then Woodstock, they put 98. a piece of wood. <laughs> yeah, they put a piece of wood down. We did, um, we did quite a long stint of burnouts, and my dad was actually doing it at the end, and the dude, the moose exploded. Yeah, it see, hit my, oh. it hit my rear fender and blew yep. my seat off. See, oh, <laughs> see, your theory. You see, that's that... gonna hurt somebody one day. If everyone's listening, hey, that's it hit, gonna it hurt hit our truck driver in the arm, and his arm was all black. And okay, blue. oh, yeah, great work, everybody. Great work. We're gonna have someone die from one of these post race celebrations. Is that what we all want? Is that what we want? We want someone to die? I hate to say when Steve's right, but if it, what if that was a fan? They'd probably Dude, be suing well, KTM right now. it's not going to be a now. fan, but, like, I don't get it, man. Why? Everybody lines the, around the fence. Uh, it's kind of worth it. Yeah. I mean, it's not worth it, but it's kind of like. <laughs> nope. It's just if one dead person. There, it's not just, that big a deal. You're at your own risk. You're at your own risk. I don't like any of it. I don't like uh, it. Just, uh, just celebrate like hey, a normal yeah, I person. Saw a picture. I saw a video of you revving the bike at Vegan's oh, rig. Yeah, it was. I was big rever there with with with, with uh, Duff Duffy. Um, mm -hmm. Hey, uh, so SMX coming up. I'm gonna ask uh, uh, Phil the same question here coming up here. But how do you practice for SMX? Like, what do you do? What uh, like I mean, Charlotte will have a little bit of that outdoors ish a little bit again, and then uh, Vegas and Dallas should be soupy ish. How do you change anything up? I don't know. No, I no. I got. I'm gonna test this week. Um, because I don't really have much like setting wise because I, well, one supercross wasn't very good. So I learned, we learned a lot in outdoors about the bike. I found something I really like, So we're going to take that and put it on supercross stuff, uh -huh. go from there, five be somewhere in the middle. But I don't know. It's kind of like a weird, it's kind of weird because the tracks are so different Yep. and you kind of just have to go there and adjust. Like, I mean, we all know how to ride supercross. We all know how to ride outdoors. So, I mean, there's nothing like we can. I mean, we're so far into the season at this point and have ridden so much that you kind of just go and um, yeah. you adjust when you get there. It's not like you can really, like, pinpoint what you have to work on, but it's kind of a, it's a weird series, too, because it goes double and triple points. Like, yep. I mean, the, the last two races are the ones that obviously matter, but, um, yeah, it's, it's different. It's hard to approach it, honestly, because last year was the first year, and now this year, I, I don't really think anyone really knows how to approach it still, so it's, I mean, it's cool, and Something that's different. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's take a couple phone calls here for you. Chase Sexton, 450 motocross champion. Go ahead, Wesley. You're on the line with uh, Chase Sexton. Hey, fellas, how y'all doing? Good. Hey, Chase, I was going to say, I got to watch you and Eli battle it out in 22 at Red Bud and Millville. And then I watched last year, I made it to Ironman. I was at Ironman again this weekend. And I can definitely say it's nice to see you back on form, buddy. Like, the, the you I saw ride Saturday is way closer to the you I saw ride in 22 than what we saw last year. So congrats on that. It looks good. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I mean, it's so hard to compare. Like, I mean, now last year I was I was really struggling. Um, and, yeah, I don't think that I was riding great. But 22, I, kinda, I was watching, like I said, I watched Iron mm -hmm. Man. Yep. And I, I don't know, like, I – I watched the replay from this year. I like everyone was saying, "Oh, dude, you're you're going so fast in 22." I'm like, "Dude, I I don't really like. I think, I mean, for me, feeling wise, like this is the best I feel like I've ridden. Um, I'm obviously biased, but um, the pace just keeps getting higher and higher. Like, I don't know. It's just I feel like I'm getting better, and this year was like just different for me. So, 22 was good. And that was kind of the stepping stone for me. Like, I think that was the year that I got a lot better at outdoors than before I was never like honestly that good and yeah it's just kind of an evolution but this year like I think I put that year and then last year's frustration kind of together and yeah it was it was good thanks Wesley uh Greg's on one what's up Greg what do you want to ask Chase Sexton hey Steve thanks for taking my call I'm yeah. a Canadian racer living in Chicago for the last or Illinois specifically for the last uh, 20 years so I feel like this is uh, due for a call here yeah uh <laughs> Chase how are you um uh, Got to uh, meet you last year at the Chicagoland race, and obviously we're a different team and everything. And it seemed um, there was a lot to look forward to at that point, uh, but a lot, a lot of uncertainty this year. Obviously, you're, you're very sharing of, of what transpired. I did actually get to talk to Roger DeCoster after the race, which was a treat, um, and ask him how things, you know, were, is he happy? He obviously took the podium and got all the manufacturer awards, et cetera. But 
between you as a racer and the team management, what does the post race and post series, I guess, communication look like for you guys? Like, did you all sit down together and have a talk, or is it just kind of an assumption you move on? No, they just seized the KTM 450 underneath the tent on a block of wood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was too loud to <laughs> chat. <laughs> yeah, I was there um, for that, too. It, it, yeah, there was no conversation then. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, it, it just depends on how the race goes, honestly. I mean, if like on, in the outdoors this year, we didn't really have much, like, not really much to say after the races. So I was pretty happy. I mean, there's a few – that I was still, like, tweaking the bike early on in the series. Yeah, like, but once we got into, like, the after halfway, like, there really wasn't much to say. Like, I was pretty happy. Um, little tweaks here and there. But they kind of let me do my – like, especially when I'm, like, on a roll and I'm feeling good. Like, they kind of let me just keep going and not really try and um, interfere much. So, um in Supercross, it was a different story. I was uh, there's a lot of there's a lot okay. of post race uh, meetings. I can vouch that, for uh, that. I was uh, I gave up a few times uh, waiting for Ch- for Chase uh, to talk to him. I'm just <laughs> like, uh, yeah, meeting's still going on, and it's uh, 1 a.m. So I'm gonna leave. Yeah. So there were some there were some tough <laughs> meetings after after races, but um, yeah, it just depends on the situation to be honest. Um, all right. All right. Well, I'm sure. I'm sure. What they, they were a lot more comfortable after you pull in a couple titles. Yeah. So. Uh, thanks, Greg. Um, congratulations. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, I was going to ask you. Uh, oh, go ahead, Gully. You got a question for, for Chase? Well, I was just go. looking at the sheets that Steve prints out in front of us here. Uh, you led 28 laps this past weekend. You needed. I don't know if you knew this, but you needed 25 to actually pass Hunter. You beat him by four laps at the end of the year. Um, do you guys look at stuff like that? Is that, like, obviously it showcases, you know, how great shape you are and all that kind of stuff, but, like, um, 101 to 97 at the at the final thing. You needed the full 1-1 one, one day, basically, to, to make that pass on that thing. Is that something you guys even stare at? Because that's, that's kind of cool. You needed that many at the last round, and you made it happen. Yeah, um, I think that – I honestly think that was maybe the most I led all year. Yeah. Um, I think that was the most laps I led all year. So I got – I passed in the first lap for the lead. Um, besides for Unadilla, that was the most laps I had led. So, um, yeah, I was actually looking at the stats going into um, Ironman because there's a few that I kind of, like, pay attention to that's, like, the average finish, which was – I want to say I was at right at, like, two-something before Ironman or, like, maybe 2.1 or 2.0 yeah. or something. And I wanted to get under two. So that means kind of I had to win both motos. And then um, what else did I look at? I looked at – how many points I had, I wanted to get over 500. So yeah. I at least had to go one, two to get to that, yep, I think. Yep. And then I looked at something else, too. There was a stat um, that we pulled out. Hunter Lawrence is has the most points in an outdoor series without winning a race out of anybody that didn't win the title. Oh, really? So he, do you know what I mean? So John Michelle Bale has yeah, the he, most points without an overall. Yeah, 91. Yeah, because he won the over. He, he won, won the, the series. He, right? he won, yeah. He's got ninety one percent of the points or something. Yeah. And Hunter has, if you don't count Bale, who won the title and doesn't really give a shit that he didn't win an overall. Yeah. Hunter is the highest scoring rider without an overall win yeah. uh, in in motocross history. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it is kind of gnarly. That's a neat he, stat. Yeah. I mean, he was pretty. I mean, I besides for uh, Thunder Valley, like I really didn't. I mean, Paula obviously wasn't like super good, but like I didn't really have too many like hiccups other than thunder valley so yeah. he was super consistent and like i think a lot of people i don't I wouldn't say they downplay hunter but dude there was just, like those last three races our speed was i felt like pretty high like i had like kind of flashbacks of last year um oh yeah <laughs> and i feel like he was riding really well yeah like when he got on the 25 he got i think he went up a level yep and whether that be he just likes it more or it's new and fun, mm-hmm. but like he was really good. And this dude, he starts up front every moto. Like he's pretty yeah. much whole shot in first or second every moto. So it, it makes my life a lot more difficult. And like, yeah, it was, he he ended up not winning an overall, but dude, he was right there every weekend. And I yeah. had to like really be on my toes. And he uh, he's a fun guy to race to because he's he's pretty gritty. Um, and he's like, obviously both jet and Hunter both race really fair. So, um, it was fun, but yeah. Um, um oh, the other stat I was looking at, oh, too, yeah. I, I wanted to get seven overall wins, not six, six. 
I don't know why it doesn't sound. <laughs> <laughs> He's not competitive at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah not, not competitive yeah. at all. Did you look at his stat? Oh, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. list off 50 yeah, stats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, That's funny that the Hunter, I, I would have thought Hunter got more hole shots. He got six this year on the stat sheet. But anyway, last thing quick for me, Chase. Uh, did you see James? No, I okay. didn't. I, I saw him after, like, obviously, and they were all telling me, oh, James is on the track. Yeah, yeah dude, he left the TV. Yeah, was out, everything. I was high five, and I saw him. Like, he, uh, I thought that was pretty cool. Like, yeah. Obviously, James and I have a history, like, whether it be good or bad. Um, but actually, in the last, like, five, I, when I think it was Philadelphia, he was on my flight home, and he sat right in front of me. And, dude, we hadn't talked since we stopped working together. Yeah. And, yeah, there was some bad blood. Like, nothing, like, happened. But there was just, like, yeah, when you split off somebody, it's not, like, uh, it's kind of uncomfortable. Yeah, I think, and, I think he took some weird shots at you. I said, I've said that a few times on my show. I didn't understand it. I didn't get it. I thought he yeah. was, yeah hard on you but i mean it's it's whatever i i, I don't really like yeah i don't hold it against him because like after he talked to me in philadelphia um then like he started texting me like we're eventually gonna play golf again and um but he's been really cool he texted me right after the first moto um so yeah, i thought that was cool of him and, yeah yeah that was yeah, neat we, to see we on tv back and forth, like if he says something and I, i'll respond like if they interview me about it but like it's all it's all fun. So, I wonder if he um, got in shit from the TV guys. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, he's James was, Stewart. It was cool. He's James Stewart. Oh, no, it was super that was cool. A cool yeah. thing to see, really. Um, before we let you go, Chase, 